Hey, and welcome to retopologizing with Retopoflow and Blender. This tutorial is going to be a little bit different from what we normally do, which is that we are retopologizing something like a head or a full body. And we already have the topology mostly planned out kind of behind the scenes. That is an awesome approach if you want to learn how to use the tools. But this tutorial is going to be more of a raw look into how I'm actually retopologizing. There's a lot of value in learning how I'm actually approaching something like this instead of just seeing the final result being done with live retopo. So before we get started with this, you have to decimate your model. This is something we've already done. If we click on the model now, when we go into the poly mode and into wireframe mode, you can see that we have a really high risk model but it's a lower risk than you think. And this is because we've been decimating our model. And that means that we're preserving the details and the shape while drastically reducing the poly count. You can do this, this in two ways. You can either do it in ZBrush, which is how I prefer to do it, where you can see we already decimated this model here. Shift F to see the wireframe. We can go to Polygon, we can go to C Plugin. And then we can go to Decimation Master. And here you can see at the bottom, we have various presets. Simply click the one you want to use. And so in this case, something like 250K is quite a lot. And in our case here, we use 75K because that's going to give us 75,000 points. And that's plenty for something like that. The higher the poly count you have, the, the better the model is going to be, but also the heavier it's going to be. The second approach is to go under the model go under modifiers and then use decimation. This is under generate and then we have decimation. And now you can see that we have a ratio of one, which means it's not gonna do anything. And then we set this on like 0.2. And now you can see that this model becomes drastically lower in resolution. What you should do if, you're, if you've been sculpting this in Blender and you want to retopologize it, what you should do is you should make a copy of your model. You should decimate this copy and now you should apply this decimation to your model. The reason is that you don't want to destroy your original model. You simply want to work on top of it as a low res mesh. So we are just gonna delete this since we've already done it. And in our case, the decimation amount of 75,000 is perfectly fine, but you don't wanna bring in something like a 10 million poly model. I also renamed it to head ref and horns ref. This just indicates that this is a reference mesh. Then we will just save our scene. This has already been saved for you. You can find this on a Retop Flow 01. Then we will select the head and then we'll click on Retop Flow. I'm using 3.01, which is the initial version with some bug fixes. Even if you are using a more advanced version of this, the main things are gonna be the same most likely. The tools are gonna to be the same and it's gonna be the same workflow. So click on Retop Flow and then we hit start Retop Flow and create create tar new target. Even if this is called something else in your version, which it might, who knows, then it will still be something along the, along the lines of create new target. We'll click on that one with the main head selected. And this is gonna give us, this is gonna load us into retopo flow mode. Now I will just disable this message so we don't get it every single time and then we'll close this down as well. This tutorial also requires you to know how Retopoflow works in the sense that you should know what the tools are and how they are working. In order to do this, you should watch the video which ships along with this tutorial, which is a video we originally made for YouTube talking about how Retopoflow actually works and some, some quick theory there. So you can find a link to that or you can find the actual video accompanying this as well. So the first thing we'll do is we will enable symmetry. We'll go under our symmetry and we will set the X axis enabled. I prefer to work with symmetry enabled at least early on. That means I can get like a center line going and I can use something like the contours tool to create mesh for a mesh for these areas. So we're gonna be starting off by doing contours, which simply just means that we can add a lot of geometry for certain areas. If this is a full body, we would want to use this for something like the arms and the feet and those kind of things, but we are only gonna be using this for the, for the head. We will be using the control key and just the left mouse button drag. And now you can see that we are getting all these segments and it's symmetrical, which is beautiful. We're gonna keep it pretty low. In this case, we have 16, which is great. You don't wanna go too high. If you want more or less, you simply hit the plus key or the minus key, but we're gonna just keep this to 16. And then we simply just drag out another one as well. Go to the side. What's important is that you, you have to make sure that it actually drags all the way across. You don't wanna be in a case where it, it, it drags over empty space, then you're gonna get errors. 
So drag out another one as well. And then we can drag out another one like so and another one. I don't want too much going on at this point and we will be adjusting this later on. So the reason I'm, do, I'm starting off with this is just so we have some general topology to work with, just so we have a starting point. Then we will be going into strokes. I don't find poly strips to be very useful when it comes to this kind of work. So we're going to start off with strokes and we're going to be drawing some strokes around. I also don't find the poly pen to be that useful early on as well because I have more control with the strokes. But we're going to be mostly dealing with strokes, poly pen, then tweak and then relax. The rest of the tools we really aren't using a whole lot, not for this kind of work. So now we're going to hit Alt A just to deselect everything. And then we're gonna make a few strokes around a few different areas. This is simply to get some base topologies we can work with. So now we will um, we'll, uh, hold down the control key and we just, we'll just drag around the eye. This is my approach for doing most things with topology, you start to drag it around and then make sure you have some overlap just so it can properly attach like this. And then we'll just get one loop. Make sure you have the main loops first, and then from there, we will get into the specificity of it. Then we'll hold on control again, and we'll just drag out another loop like so. Now there's a million ways of doing this, and this is not like the correct way. This is just a way, and this way has been tested, and it works really well. But there are many other ways of doing this. If you want to use poly strips or poly pen or anything else, go for that. And then we will use the strokes again, hit Alt A to get out of uh, the selection mode, deselect everything. And then we'll drag out a loop like so. Then we'll drag out another one. And there we go. Now what I want to do is I want to hit the minus key just so that we don't have too many loops. We want to have as few segments as possible at this stage. We can always add segments. Of course, we can also remove segments as well, but it's a lot easier to work with a low rest base. What I'm also thinking about at least a little bit now, not that much, but I'm a little bit conscious of it, is that these loops are matching up so that this edge and this edge can be bridged, this edge and this edge can be bridged, just so that it's a lot easier uh, to connect everything up. Then we'll do another one using strokes and we'll draw this from around the center line and then we'll draw it down like so. And this is a little bit too dense for me, so I'll just reduce this. See, this is the case where we, we don't necessarily know exactly how many loops we're going to be using. We're not going to go, okay, this is exactly fitting this and that and that. Uh, we, we just don't know. Uh, when it comes to retopology, it's kind of like a puzzle and you figure out as you go. You don't know exactly how many loops. We could have made pre-made everything. So this would be 12, this would be 16, this would be 18, and we would just perfectly match it, match it up. But that's not how you do retopology. I'll just reduce a little bit, just so that I can kind of start to think if these kind of things would match up. But it's it's not like the end of the world if they don't. You just don't want to make sure that this is like 64 and this is like 20. And then we'll do another one, like so. And then we'll hit the minus key. And you can see here now that this is a bit rough. Uh, this should have been cleaner. But it doesn't matter because we're going to use a tweak tool later on. Hit Alt A. Remember to hit Alt A. And then we're going to start blocking in some other loops. Some other loops we're going to be blocking in would be the loop going down here. You can see I'm not perfectly sturdy, but it's it's okay. Because we will, we will go through later on. Hit the minus key a few times just so we have fewer loops. And then we'll just drag down another loop as well. Hit the minus key so we have as few loops as possible. And this is where we could line these up perfectly, but we're not because this isn't like the perfect density we want. We want this to be higher res, but we, we, will, we, we, we will go in later on and add more loops to it so it matches up. And then what we can do, which is kind of cool, we can hold down, we can select this one, we can hold down control key, and then we can drag down and we can keep drawing it out like this. And now we get more loops like this way. And you see you have the same density as before, which is pretty cool. And then I want the general center line to go out as well. And we'll do the same thing as before. We'll just select this one and we'll just draw it out like so. Minus key a few times. This you want to be pretty sparse in terms of the poly count. You don't really want this to be that crazy. We can select the middle one, like, or we can select this one, and then we can drag it from the more middle, like so. 
So if we just redo this, now we are at a spot where this is working pretty well. And this is of course where we'll have to reduce it a little bit as well. And then we'll have to soften this out and everything. But that's okay. It doesn't matter too much. Don't be too, don't go too crazy with details at this stage. We just want to make sure that this is generally in a good spot. We could of course select these as well. And we just drag them in like so. And then we just select this and we just drag it in. Because now we have a center line going through. And that just makes it a lot easier. Once you have a center line, then we can also disable symmetry. Because then you see this is actually in the exact center. Uh, it, it's a really annoying if it's not in the exact center because then you are you're just fighting against the topology. And then we'll I'll just enable it again. The reason I don't want to have enable all times is because it gets very messy. It's very hard to actually see exactly what's going on here. Just save as well. And then we'll use strokes again. The reason I'm using strokes with symmetry when I'm doing this is so that I don't have to draw this in an asymmetrical way. I just have to start at the center, go around here, and go from here. So we'll draw this out as well. And this is actually a common mistake. What you saw happen now is that it does this. And that's because it didn't hit Alt-A. So make sure to hit Alt-A before, and then we draw this out. And then we draw this out like so, and we are going to add just one more. Just so we have one to one bit of one piece of topology, one vert in at the corner of the mouth. And then now we do have to have this in selected. We need we shouldn't click Alt A now because then this doesn't work. And now we just drag this out again. Like so. And there we go. Hit the minus key. And now we have some good loops. Then I'll hit Alt A again and then I'll start to drag down a few more loops going from here and down. You can see that I'll I'll try to kind of keep some of these these features in topology but i'm not going to be too go too crazy about it generally try to match it if at least there are bigger features but it's not something you have to be crazy religious about so we're just going to be dragging this down a few, few a few loops now we, now i'm just kind of thinking does this match up like so and this matches up pretty well so that's kind of neat kind of nice <laughs> kind of neat there we go <laughs> words okay so this kind of matches up. So just real quick about the edge flow. How, what am I, how am I approaching this? The thing about topology is that topology by itself isn't, you don't have like right or wrong topology necessarily. It's all about what you can use it for. If you're going to be using this for just a static piece, like maybe you're just going to be rendering this as it is, Topology doesn't really matter. I know that might be a slightly controversial statement, but honestly, when I'm rendering this guy out for my final piece, I'm just decimating it and rendering the decimated model. But if, on the other hand, this is being used for film or games and it's going to express a lot of emotion, then you need good topology. And then you need topology which works with the kind of expressions you want. For instance, if you want to his mouth to be very expressive, you might need all of these things in topology. But if it's going to be more, if it's not going to move his mouth a whole lot, then you don't need that many loops. So the discussion, what is good topology and where to place my loops, becomes a little philosophical. It's like you're building an engine. All right, cool. What kind of engine are you using? Well, it depends what you want to use it for. So that is that is the thing with topology. You have to first figure out what is the use case and then build it from there. That said, in general, there are some good loops to get in. And some of these are ones we've already got in, such as getting the jaw in here, getting nice circular loops around the neck, getting some nice loops going from around the brow, like so, almost a little mask going down here can also be nice. I kind of want this loop to continue in here. Then we want the loop to go around here as well. And then we want the loop to go around the nasolabial fold, the fold we have here, just so that we can generally get good deformation. Then we want nice loops going around his eyes as well, so you can close those. And then we also want a nice loop going around his ear as well. That makes it a lot easier to actually retopologize his um, his ears. Then we also want nice a nice loop going around his horn as well. Obviously, that's non-standard topology because most people don't have horns. But in this case, we are going to be doing that here. Uh, we're also doing the horn as a whole separate piece, and that is because this will be a separate piece in real, the real world. So 
that also includes the discussion of do you model the teeth as separate pieces? And yes, because they're separate pieces. They're made from a separate material. Do you model the ears as separate pieces? No, because they're the same material. Do you model the eyeball separately? Yes, separate material. So what we're doing now is we're going to just clean this up a little bit using the tweak tool. Use the F key to resize this. And we're just going to be tweaking this so it's a little nicer. And then we're going to be adding just a few more loops. And then we're going to be adding this. Uh, then we're going to be uh, cutting this chapter short. And then we'll start refining the topology from here on. So my philosophy for retopoing is slow is fast. And there is a lot of thought behind that. It means if you do good loops like we're doing now, retopoing it and adding details and doing the final thing becomes actually quite easy because then it, you've, it's kind of like drawing a picture from scratch or painting in, like paint by numbers. If you do proper topology like we're doing now, like slow, proper line art and everything is right, then it's, it feels very much like paint by numbers. But if you don't do this, then it's going to take a long time because then you're kind of doing the line art as you are, as you're painting in the colors. So we're just going to go in and we're just going to tweak some of these things now, like this. And again, slow is fast. So just make sure that the points are in the right spot. For instance, here, you can already start to see a loop forming. This can be bridged here, which can just form a line all the way over here. So just get these points into the right spot. So if you if you understand this, meth this methodology, then you can kind of retopologize anything. Because now you understand that it's about blocking in the main loops first, and then it's about connecting them up. But also with the more deeper look of, of why are you retopologizing in the first place. So this is kind of how I tend to do it. You add some loops, you refine the loops, you add more loops, you refine those loops. And if you do this right, you don't have to go in and delete things and re-tweak things afterwards. And you can see how low poly we're starting as well. The more low poly you're starting, the easier everything becomes. A little tip as well for topology is try to have the same amount of segments, top and bottom. That makes it a lot easier if you want to close the lips. Not a huge thing for most things, unless you're doing like full on feature animation. But in general, it's, it's just a good rule of thumb. You also generally want to have square polygons. So when you see this becomes very oblong, this becomes like it's this is uh, this is short and this is long. Try to keep this around the same size. OK, so now we're going to be using um, now we've uh, refined this a little bit. This, 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 this level of refinement has helped a lot already. Just going to do a little bit more of this. Just going around and just doing a little bit more. We don't have to make it perfect because we will go in and relax things as we go. And we'll delete things and all that. It just, just helps to, to do this refinement. And here you can see we have way too many. This is probably a stroke, which I forgot to uh, I hit the minus key. But it's OK. We can go in and we can tweak this later on as well. We we'll probably need around this this level of topology anyway at the end. All right, cool. Just gonna refine this a little bit as well. Just hit the F key to make your brush a little bigger. And I'm just going to refine these a little bit more because this is getting a bit nasty. A bit nasty, I mean very stretched. We, you, you want your polygons not to become stretched. And like I said, slow is fast. So spend your time on this stage and everything becomes easier. Obviously, don't spend two hours in this stage. You know, you, you have to keep moving on as well. But you're going to be finding that if you if you rush this, it becomes a mess later on. What you don't want to do is you don't want to retope with the eye and retope with the mouth and then to the ear and then try to connect them up. That becomes really hard and you're going to have an awful mess afterwards. OK, cool. So now we have uh, some more topology. Then we're going to be using the polypen. Select the loop, hold on or select an edge, hold on control key. And then we're just going to be adding this like so. We, we are just going to be going through like so. 
And here it doesn't really match up, but we can add loops later on to this. So it's not a huge concern. Then I want to uh, add some loops for the underside of the nose as well. Just so we have this as one loop and hold the, hit Alt A to deselect everything. Hit the control key, drag out a single polygon. And you want to make sure that in the settings, we are working with um, quads. If you hit control and tilde, you can set this to try quad, quad only, and we have set this to quad only. And then we're just gonna block it out like so. I just need to tweak this a little bit, select a single point, select the other point and move it out. And then we can select this again, and then we can just start to block this in. It is tempting to go really heavy in topology here, but still keep this light. It really helps to get some of these loops in early on. And then I'm just gonna add a loop here. And then we're gonna add a loop here. You can see I'm actually deliberately going across the center line because it's gonna merge it to the center. And then we're gonna be adding a loop here. And now I'm just kind of trying to get the center line going. And again, we're just going a bit, little bit across just so that we, we, we were sure to hit the center line. Something like that. And then we're gonna merge all these things later on. And then I'm gonna do a quick loop around the ears as well. This is where I really prefer to have a loop around the ears. It becomes so much easier to connect things up. So Alt A, hold on Control key and drag it out. And then we're just gonna be doing a loop around. The reason I don't want to do this with a strokes tool is because the strokes tool is great if you can see the entire stroke, but it becomes pretty cumbersome if you, if you, if you have to move the camera. So in this case, I find it much easier to, to do this in a few operations such as get down loops and then go from here, go out and just do the whole line like so. Okay, and then we'll do the last thing as well like I was talking about, which was the horn. And for this, we're gonna be using the strokes tool. Make sure to hit Alt A just a few times if you want to. Then we're gonna be holding on the control key and just dragging this out like so. There we go. I'm gonna be removing, reducing this a little bit down to something like eight. I, I tend to stick with numbers, like even numbers, 8, 12, 16, as I find it a little bit easier to connect things up. But it doesn't matter a whole lot because we are going to be connecting it up later on. There we go. And then we have to figure out how to connect all these things up. So now you can see relatively quickly, we've been able to block in most loops so far. We still have a lot of work left to do, but so far a lot of the work has already been done for us and it's not that hard to go from here to final topology. It's a lot harder to go from messy topology where everything is already kind of refined but is messy to something final than to go from clean to final. So in the next chapter, we are going to take this and we're gonna be connecting a lot of things up 